Greetings and welcome to a new video about another control system topics. We continue with the state error examples. In this example, I will look at a particular situation where we have a PID control system. In this case, also the PID controller is in the feedback path. So we would like to know what kind of performance we can get having a PID controller in this configuration specifically for the steady state error. Of course, we'll do the calculations step by step and also check the calculation using simulations in MATLAB. So let's look at our problem. We have the following system given, which is GS here, given as a second order systems, already open loop stable, which is then controlled by the PID controller, which is given here as C in the feedback loop. And the C is then given by this expression K1 plus K2 over S plus K2, K3 times S. So a very generic expression. You can see it is a summation of three terms, the P, the proportional, the integral, the I, and also the derivative part D. Now for this configuration, we would like to calculate the K1, K2, and K3 if the steady state error is 0 0.1. So we have three unknowns and the input is a unit step. There's a reference and we would like to have at the output just 0 0.1 as an error. So let's check what we can achieve in this configuration. So we start with the solutions. First, let's rewrite this controller for a PID, which will be helpful later on. So we can also make that as a one fraction. So taking the terms together, you will get this. You can see that there is a second order term and also a, another term here in the denominator, which is just a, a pure S, so which is a pole at origin. All right, so what we do next, we always check of course, the stability. And in this case, again, I will use the root Herbert stability criterion for the st stability analysis. So I start with the closed loop transfer function using the Mason's gain rule. What we have is the forward path divided by one plus the loop gain, which is then actually shown here. If you now substitute everything we have from here, so you will actually use this expression for the PID, you will have this, so the G S over one plus the GS times the controller. If you now rewrite this, so you have actually a simplified form of this expression, you will see four S over a third order expression in the denominator. Now the second step is determine the correct equation from this closed loop transfer function. Now that is given by this part, so the denominator, we need to equate that to zero. So this part, you take that and you equate that to zero. For the root Herbert's method, we need a polynomial, so we need to work out these parentheses and also here, and also collect all the like terms, so the s cubed, s squared, s, and also the constant term together. After you have done that, you get this. This is the result after those steps. So you can see a third order polynomial. So moving on to with the stability criterion, we then generate our table, which is the row table. And then we start with the polynomial again. This is what we have determined shortly. We have the A1 again in front of the S cubed, A2 in front of S squared, etc. So you can see actually all the terms. This is the third order polynomial in general. This is our correct equation and these are the coefficients we will use in our table. Now the table is shown here in general. Again, you see the S cube up to S to the power zero. This, these are the four coefficients from our system, which are shown here. And these are the B1 up to B3 and then C1 up to C3. We need to calculate and then evaluate the stability using the first column. We have done that also in the previous video. And we have also on this channel, you can find the another separate playlist which covers numbers, uh, uh, different examples about the root Herbert stability criterion. So please check that if you want more details about that topic. So we start with B1, B2 and B3 and these are the calculations here in this box. Again, these are all uh, detailed explained in a separate video about root Herbert's stability criterion. This is what you get. You make actually a uh, matrix from these two and then add here and then determine the determinant. You place a minus sign divided by the A2 here, just the formula and then substitute everything you have. 
you get actually this expression. So working out that, you will get this expression. So it is 1 plus k1 minus k2 over 5 plus k5 plus 4k3. So it is the expression which has actually all the unknowns we want for b1. Now for b2, if you do the math, you get 0. And for b3, you also get the 0. This is again using those formulas we have discussed in that video about the root Herbert's stability criterion. Now, using the C1 up to C3, again in a similar form, these are the results. So you can see C1 is 4 times K2, and the rest is just 0. So if I now add all the coefficients, also what we have calculated just for the rest of the values, you will get this table. Now, for the stability, we need to evaluate the first column. That means the following. So moving on. So evaluating the first column. That means the step four is check the K1, K2, and K3 for stability. Now, in order to have a stable system, you don't want a sign change in the first column. Now, for our case, we have one, so it's already starting with a positive, so I need to stay positive. So this must be positive. That means 5 plus 4 K3 must be larger than 0. And this is also larger than 0. And also this. So it is all larger than zero. So I need all these four terms. Actually, this already is larger than zero, but the three must be all must be larger than zero. So we have three conditions we need to meet. Okay, now let's then rewrite this in a simplified form. So that means actually K3 must be larger than minus 1.25. Okay. For K2, I need the value which is larger than zero. Okay, so I have already two conditions which, is, which are very clear. But this one is a little bit dependent on what you actually have for K3 and K2. So you can rewrite this as a function of the rest. So K1 isolated. So K1 is then in this form dependent on the value you have chosen for K2 and K3. Okay, now if we now, for example, select a value for K2, so let's say 1 because it's larger than 0, and you also take a value for K3, which is again larger than 1 point, minus 1.25, let's say also simplified 1. What you have then that requires then for K1 is the following. You take this formula, you just substitute for K3 and K2, 1. So you get 1 over 9 minus 1 will be then, must be larger than minus 8 over 9. That's the condition. So of course, this must be larger. So if you take it exactly, you will have an oscillation in the output. So you will then have a marginal stable. So this is just a set. So we can, of course, take a number of other sets also. A possible set, if you say, okay, let's make it larger than minus 8 over 9, that can be also 1. So we have then 1, 1, and 1. So all of the three unknowns are 1. So actually, the job is now done in terms of stability just a set, a possible set. Of course, we need to check the steady state error also. So for that, you need to transform that to a unity gain feedback, which is not the case at the moment. So we actually subtract here one and add a plus one here, and that will then be a new transfer function. We have discussed that, and it will be a PS. So for that, I need to use, again, a Mason's gain rule, forward path over one plus the loop gain, this is actually the expression. If I now add everything here, you see a minus s here, and you will have then, actually this was first, so actually a little bit uh, in the flow is actually first this, and then you rewrite that, you get this one. So simplify it for this. Now for a unit step input, you have a kp, which is then the limit of s approaching zero for this loop gain, but this, this time is the loop gain, since this is unity gain feedback is just also P. That is, of course, mandatory for using this position error constant. If you now work this out, just substitute also the P here, and then also evaluate this at S equal to zero, what you get is zero over zero plus four times zero, zero, K2, and then also zero here. So it's just zero over four K2, but it's also zero. So it is zero, it's an interesting result. It means actually the following, KP is zero, but we know EP, so error, position error is one over one plus KP for unit step input. That means this is all, if I just work, work it out for our case, for our specification, I need a nine 
for KP. So my specification says for this problem, I need a nine for my KP, but I can only get zero for this specific situation. So these two actually shows that I have no solution. That means you have actually an error which is already one. And whenever, whatever you take actually for the value of K, you can see actually here, so every value for K will give you exactly zero for KP, that means error of one. That means the following is an interesting conclusion. The step error is always one. So unit step error is always one, even if there is a PID control. So you might add, you might think, okay, there's a PID controller. We have a pure integrator. We will uh, definitely eliminate the error. That's not the case in this situation. You can see if, since this is actually in the feedback path, that will show you in a different dynamics. So this is an interesting conclusion and also not expect maybe in the first uh, from from this uh, problem. But let's check that in, uh, in more detail. For example, and again, our boundary condition for stability. This was our boundary condition for stability. This was larger than zero. This must be larger than minus 1.25. And also we have this K1, which is then related to K2 and K3. Now steady state error condition or bounding condition was actually saying the following. You have always one, so even if you have a PID control or not. So it is not really dependent on the PID controller, it's always one. So that's really interesting. If you have a PID controller here in feedback, you will have always a one for unit step input. So possible solutions, you might ask, okay, we have actually not met this exercise. That's true. But for example, if you just still move on and you accept this one, what kind of solutions you can have or what kind of options you can have. It's not actually a solution, but the options. So you can say set one, let's say this is one and this is one. Then you will actually have for K1 this, but you can of course say, okay, I want the larger value of that one, let's say minus 0 0.5 or zero or one, another value. But you can also say, I would like to have this one. So let's make it a little bit larger. Again, you work it out for K2 and then work out actually the value. We will get minus seven over nine again, I need a value which is larger than this one. Again, zero, minus 0 0.5 do the job, will do the job. You might ask, of course, also say, I will like to reduce this really arbitrarily. So you can do everything in this case, such that this is all math. So I've just kept this again one, but I will reduce this to 0 0.5. Again, you substitute everything. You will get the minus six over seven. Now, if you just now make it a completely different value for K1, not minus 0 0.5, which is also valid here, let's say two, then you have actually three sets, which is actually shown here. So we have K1, K2, and K3. And we can now check this unit step response here. Again, it is not according to the specifications, but we can also say which one actually performs better and also other performance criteria. So let's check that from the closed group uh, response. For set one, this is actually what you see. So you actually see that it approaches zero. That means you apply a one and you get the zero as the final, which means that you have one, that your error is one. So it is actually correct. And this is the system we had. You can see also the set and you can see it's actually oscillatory. So it is quite, uh, yeah, quite uh, active. You might say it is maybe better to also change the parameter. So let's also look at the response. It is stable, but it's not really maybe that uh, of, a, of a response we would like to have. So let's also look at the step response, unit step response for the set two. Now we will get this one, it's actually even worse. It's oscillating too much and also longer. Again, the final value is zero. And you can again see there's a, a, a value at the peaking here. So this is maybe also not the best solution. So also let's again look at step uh, set three. Again, it's stable, but again, not really uh, nice result. Now let's also like check the step set three, What you see here is indeed, this is a much better result. There is no, yeah, let's say damp oscillation. It has again a value of zero for final. So there is again an error of one. There's a different set again, this is set three for the same system and amplitude here is actually smaller than the other two uh, sets. Again, this is a stable system. 
but it's also showing that this is approaching a final value. Now let's also now compare the results, so all sets together. You can see T1, T2 and T3 are for set 1 and 2 and 3 respectively. You can see the peak values for the set 1, set 2 and set 3. You can see the set 3 has actually the smallest peak value. So again, we wanted for our problem that the error must be 0 0.1, so actually our response must approach 0 0.9. It is approaching 0. So if you just say, okay, we haven't managed to do that, but I will still want to have a better response in terms of other parameters, then you will actually choose the, the yellow one, which is T3, because that has the lowest peak and also approaches the final value much faster. This is just a choice according to the set, of course. You can have also other sets which maybe are much better. But one thing you cannot manage here is that the PID controller and the feedback path here will not cause you an error of 0 0.9, or I mean 0 0.1, so you have actually no 0 0.9 as an output, because the system in this configuration uh, will generate that. So it is, of course, maybe a surprising result, but it's also, of course, also the reason why I do these examples to show you that it is not always straightforward and trivial, which you might get. So you need to really do the math, actually, and also work out this and also verify this in the simulations. I hope this clarifies the situation about the steady state error in this configuration also in great detail. And if you have any questions, again, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Stay tuned and take care.